The first lunchtime rally of the 2015 general election campaign was held today. It was by the Singapore Democratic Party. This was the first lunchtime rally of the campaign in the heart of Singapore's central business district beside the historic Singapore River, surrounded by skyscrapers. By noon, a sizable crowd had streamed into UOB Plaza. Office workers on their lunch break and curious onlookers who had come from all over the island to hear the candidates from the Singapore Democratic Party. In Candidate for speech, Bukit Panjang single seat Kong Wai Yin took aim at what he described as the People's Action Party's policy of dangling carrots to win votes. Our dear minister was promising to build bus interchange and hawker centres. But, but uh, sorry, uh, only when PAP is voted in. Is this the kind of people you want? Is this the kind of minister you expect? Million dollar ministers. A couple of things I would like to clarify. An MP stands for Member of Parliament. He is not a magical person. He cannot do magic. He cannot promise to build hawker centres. He has no authority to do so. For it is under the purview of NEA. He cannot promise to build bus interchange. He has no authority to do so, for it is under the purview of Ministry of Transport. I hope that the PAP, as the big brother, can level up its game to have a constructive conversation on the way forward for the nation, rather than relying to campaign again and again with the offerings of carrots. My friends, are we rabbits? NUS professor Paul Tambaya, who is contesting in Holland Bukit Timah GRC, mounted a defence of the SDP's healthcare proposals, which had been criticised by Deputy Prime Minister Thaman Shamugaratnam. But before that, and to the surprise of the crowd, Dr Tambaya had some praise for DPM Thaman. I'd like to commend DPM Thaman and some of his colleagues for contesting this election on the issues, rather than on the gutter politics of the past. I would also like to put on record my view that DPM Thaman is probably the most brilliant of our current ministers, and many of us think he would make a fine prime minister. In fact, to tell you a secret, there are many of us in the alternative parties who hope that one day DPM Thaman will have a falling out with the prime minister and will come out to lead a grand coalition of opposition parties, Pakatan Rayat Singapura, to, to present a real alternative to the current PAP government. Dr Tambaya then listed three ways in which he disagreed with Mr Thaman's critique. First, he stressed that the SDP's health care plan was a national plan for basic services only. Second, he claimed that the government's leftward shift in policies was accelerated only because there were more opposition members in Parliament. And third, that the top 1% of Singaporeans would not object to paying higher taxes to finance social safety nets. This, Dr. Tabaya said, is because many of the wealthiest men in Singapore's past were also great philanthropists. That is the kind of top 1% we want. We don't want the Robert Mugabe's, the billionaire playboys, the tax evading Europeans and Australians, the Burmese drug lords. If those people are upset about the proposed luxury taxes or the higher taxes proposed by alternative parties and want to leave the country, then I say, let them go. When he finally took to the stage, SDP Secretary General Chi Sun Juan took the PAP to task for not having the right priorities in spending. He criticised the government's plan to increase healthcare spending by $4 billion by 2020, as unveiled in this year's budget. Because Dr. Chi said this paled in comparison to the failed investments that Tomasic Holdings and GIC had made in foreign banks during the 2008 global financial crisis. And in the process, he took a dig at the Workers' Party. This government accuses us 
of coming up with policies of tax and spend. But what they will do is take our reserves, go out and make all these failed investments and then tell us that they're going to increase our health care spending by $4 billion in five years? This is the kind of situation that we have when there is no effective opposition in Parliament, that when there is no opposition like the SDP in Parliament to check on the PAP. And because there is no opposition in Parliament, effective opposition, the PAP does as it pleases, making dangerously wrong decisions without proper scrutiny and accountability.